Hey everybody and welcome back to the Inside EVs YouTube channel where today we'll be taking our first official look at the production spec Volkswagen ID Buzz. Let's get started. Right before we get started, a quick note. If you're a regular viewer of the Inside EVs YouTube channel, I'm probably a new face for you, but let me introduce myself. My name is Clint. I'm the video director for Inside EVs and for our other channel, Motor One. Speaking of Motor One, I was actually able to drive a pre-production camouflaged version of the ID Buzz just a few weeks ago. Uh, that video is gonna be linked right there on the Motor One channel. Today, we're not able to drive this production spec version, but we are able to see it obviously with the camouflage off for the first time. And that means seeing the interior for the first time as well. So this is our closest examination yet of what this thing is going to be like in real life on the roads in the US. So with that housekeeping stuff out of the way, let's get started. So my caveat right away is that this is a European spec version of the Buzz. You can see it right there on the license plate. I know a bunch of you have been <laughs> waiting for American information that's relevant to the car that we'll be getting on our streets, but for the most part, most of that information is still to come. And that's because the ID Buzz will be going on sale in the United States in the year 2024. They said we can expect it to debut officially the US spec in 2023, but it will go on sale the following year. We also know that it will be a longer wheelbase when it does go on sale. What you're looking at right now is the standard wheelbase version of the Buzz, and that is for Europe. The American version will have three rows of seating and the wheelbase will be a bit longer. That said, we can still see it for the first time in all of its glory, including the two-tone paint and some production wheels and basically everything without that giant rainbow camouflage wrap on it. Right away, you'll see a DNA connection between this and the concept car that we first saw in Pebble Beach back in 2017. In the years since then, Volkswagen has been running these things all around with camouflage and LiDAR systems, autonomous tech on them, and people were a bit down uh, on how the design translated from concept to production. But here it is, this is the real thing. And you can decide for yourself, is this close enough to the concept uh, to satisfy most people? For me, right away, I think there's a lot here to like. Uh, starting with the two-tone paint, I love that they actually tied in a similar color to the concept car to bring it in even that much further. But there is something about this that just kind of works. It's obviously very futuristic. At the same time, there's a bunch of retro cues that you can trace back to old generations of the Volkswagen bus and then things that are just distinctive with modern Volkswagens as a whole. We'll be sure to go through all of the Easter eggs that they've pointed out to me so far on the exterior. But beyond the paint, I can tell you that these neat five-spoke wheel design look really nice in the metal. Volkswagen says it'll be offered with up to 21 inch wheels and there'll be a bunch of different wheel designs. The LED lighting right here is obviously very reminiscent of the ID4. It's a very similar signature. I love the giant Volkswagen badge right on the front. There's some scale right there. You can see that it's bigger than my hands. Body colored mesh down below, which looks nice, but Look at the size of the front overhang, just to give you an idea of the proportions of this van. A short front overhang is reminiscent of a Volkswagen bus, so it was important that they did that. There's also this massive window right behind this very thin A-pillar. It's a very distinctive design. Other things that we've been wanting to see without camouflage on, you can see these three pieces right here, very neat design detail, which looks great in person. And then at the rear, we have an LED light bar that runs the span of the entire van left to right. And then an ID Buzz logo right there in the middle, again, very similar to the ID4. There are some smaller ID Buzz is hidden all the way around. I'll try to get the camera to focus so you can see it. But right there on the glass, and if you lift the windshield wiper, there's actually a little umbrella, which is kind of a funny touch. I like that. Interior is full of little buzzes all over the place as well. It's kind of cool. Before we hop inside, let's talk about uh, charging and the battery pack, because I think that's obviously important. We'll open up the charge port right here. Obviously I can't show you an engine, but I can tell you that this version, the European version, has a 77 kilowatt net 
battery packs. That's a usable space, of course. It has 201 horsepower and I believe 224 pound-feet of torque, though I'll be sure to verify that. Um, the range, we don't have much information on, but because this is an MEB vehicle and it shares a platform with ID4, you can make assumptions based on ID4. My hope is that by the time the EPA rates this thing, you'll see a range of over 200 miles, maybe between 200 and 210, based on this being less aerodynamic and a bit heavier than ID4. Looking at charging, ID4 right now charges at a peak rate of 135 kilowatts. They're saying that there's a chance that this will do up to 170 kilowatts. That's based on early information in the German press release. So again, we're not entirely sure what will translate to the US market, but there's hope here that at least based on current uh, battery chemistry and then future software updates, that this will be able to charge at a rate up to 170 kilowatt hours. We're also hoping that when this launches in the year 24, it will have plug and charge capability. So basically you plug it in at an Electrify America station, the machine automatically hooks up to the van and it'll take care of most of the information for you. You don't have to rely on working with the machine to get the charging session started. Future battery packs, will there be bigger ones? Will there be all wheel drive versions available? The answer is probably yes, but it's just not confirmed right now. We know that it's gonna have a longer wheelbase when it hits the United States. So there's obviously a chance that they can fit a bigger battery pack there, potentially more horsepower and potentially power to all four wheels. Again, you kind of look to the ID4 for inspiration as to what they can do eventually with the buzz. All right, so let's open it up. The first thing I want to do is show you that when you open up the door, it kind of blocks the charge port, but it doesn't. I saw this on Twitter. I saw somebody and say, oh geez, does the van door completely block the charging port? And that's not the case. You have to trust that engineers know what they're doing. And when you have the van door completely open, you can still access the charge port. Um, this is actually pulled all the way back. So you can see that there's no issue there between the van door getting in the way. Let's start with the rear seats. This is a five seat configuration. Again, European spec, I'll keep saying it. Um, but there is this sort of greenish yellow accent that works with the exterior color scheme. It's fun. It's it's neat. I feel like they took more chances on the interior with this than they did the ID4. And that's a good thing. I think people wanted to see um, some more fun and lively and bright cues with the buzz. These seats do slide forward and backward. I'm not sure exactly how much legroom you're going to be getting. The specs are a little vague with this so far, uh, but know that there'll be multiple seating configurations. And this tunnel right there is actually removable. So you can have a full pass through to the front section of the van, uh, or you can keep it in place for additional space to put things. Automatic doors as well. And they did tell me that although this particular model doesn't have it, there will be a function available where you can kick your foot underneath and then the van door will automatically open just like a lot of minivans on sale today. open up the cargo area it's actually down here liftgate is automatic at least on this version you can see a pretty sizable cargo area um, again the u.s version will have three rows of seats so it will be a reduced cargo section obviously behind that third row but you can imagine they'll be able to fold flat. And right now, at least, with this smaller wheelbase, there's a lot of space to put things. They also mentioned that there's going to be a board that you can slide in right about this level. And when you do so, the seats will fold flat and you can put a mattress in the back. So the beginnings of the camper electric van of your dreams, I guess. So here we have an interior that is very familiar looking, but at the same time distinctive in a lot of good ways. Obviously this is gonna look familiar to anybody who's seen the inside of an ID4. That said, the ID Buzz has its own character. It has its own personality, which I appreciate. More of the color matching material inside that we found in the back seat. Door handle surrounded by this white area, it's sort of a beige color to be honest with you. Here we have the switch for uh, the tailgate. And hopefully this gives you a 
a sense of the view forward you have as the driver. You can immediately see the big windshield, the dramatic rake that it's at. And then as you look over there, you have a ton of visibility out either side of these windows just behind the A-pillar. So let's see if I can move the camera to the wide angle, which might give you a better view overall. Same size infotainment display as the ID4. Uh, it's running the same software as well. So if you're hoping for a big change in the infotainment, you're probably not gonna get it. And I will say it, unfortunately, that includes controls here that do not illuminate at night. Volkswagen has said there's no plans, at least right now, to change out that feature and add in illumination to those lower control panels. That's a gripe that a lot of people have thus far with the ID4. Let's actually hop inside too. Again, as a driver, this is somewhat conveying to you what the view forward looks like. Uh, immediately, you recognize this uh, digital display, which is again found in the ID4. There's this, I don't even know how to describe it. It's, it's, uh, it's obviously not wood, or if it is, it's the thinnest <laughs> wood finish I've ever seen. Um, it seems more like a plastic. The look of it is very neat. It's very modern. Uh, and I appreciate the way it does look. And then down below, if you can make out the difference in the lighting, this area is the same yellowish green color. Up to seven USB ports in the ID Buzz in the American spec. There's a wireless charging area right here where you can shove your phone right there. There's also connectivity to USB-C ports. <clears throat> There's another one over here for the passenger. So ton of different charging options uh, for passengers, which we appreciate. There also is a physical start and stop button, just like in the ID4. There's the best look yet at your interior. This does have the Hello ID function, uh, so the van can work with you as a voice assistant. There's also the big strip of LED light that runs across uh, and it shows you, I believe it's right there, you just can't see it right now. That shows you charging time, it works with the navigation. And it's just a fun touch, again, to give some of the electric Volkswagen products a bit more character. Really fun interior space, I gotta say. It's funky. You have to be into this whole multicolored retro throwback situation. It's not going to be for everybody, but I feel like if you're buying this to begin with, you're somebody that wants a vehicle that looks a bit different uh, and that takes a bit more chances with its design, which is always a good thing. Right now, this is indicating 191 miles of range uh, with 78% state of charge. Just to show you this, uh, this pre-production version. And in case you were curious, here's the key. So modern Volkswagen key. Right on the key fob, you have uh, an area to open the trunk. Looks like you also have the ability to open the van doors with the key fob, which makes a lot of sense. One touch, looks to open and shut it really easily. Other than that, pretty normal key fob. So there's a nice initial look at the production version of the ID Buzz, a car we've been waiting a long time to see without any camo on it, I'll say that. For more information, be sure to read the full story in the description below. And as always, thanks for watching.